all, this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed, and this is a chit chat time before I travel tomorrow. So I'll go on at 6 p.m. tomorrow or 6.25, then I'll be back on 18th of March. So with this, hope everyone is doing well. What would you like to talk today? Dan is here. Hello, Dan. Small crowd today <laughs> of regulars, sure. Sky is here. Hey, Sky Frog. <laughs> I'm an irregular. And here comes the Kyrie as well, the Kyrie. So, guess why she's here? She wants to now sit in my lap. Here she is. <laughs> so the camera is autofocus. It looks at the animal's eyes or human's eye and focuses on that. <laughs> so Kairi made it so difficult today. I was doing a lecture for FLCCC and Kairi would just keep staying here and not let me talk because she would just be at in in front of the camera there she is again so she would do this here on the table and then eventually she'll find a way to come and sit down in my lap so i'm going to put a little blanket on my lap so she can sit okay all set All right, so Margaret says, beautiful girl, yes. So see, now she is coming this way. There she is. She needs the mic to go away so she can move and sit down. <laughs> so Kyrie, can you? <laughs> Kyrie. Okay, come here. Mic is away. Come on. She has <laughs> so many requirements. <laughs> I cannot even see the commentary because she is just standing in front of it. Kairi? Okay. Okay, come on, Kairi, hurry up, be done. There she is, finally. Okay, okay, all good. Yes, yes, you can now sit here. That's it. That's what she wanted. Okay, so now we can talk. <laughs> Cat chat instead of chit chat. Yes, that's what she's doing. So she's going to now need here for a few minutes and then she'll sleep or sit down. Kairi, sit down now. And what she does is she, see, she started drooling on me. She starts drooling when she sits here. So Genesis, have you noticed an uptick in bacterial infection or bacterial parasites? I have not, but nowadays as the spring rolls around and the allergies would start as well, I suspect viral plus bacterial infections will become more common. I cannot stop coughing for two days because of allergies. Sue says she's sending you. <laughs> she does this every day and I just have to keep cleaning my hands. Okay, so how is everyone? Let's see. <laughs> Claire says that she has so much knowledge, yes. And if you can see, she's still needing. So she'll keep doing this thing forever. 
and if i don't have this blanket in my lap she just injures my leg truth seeker is here hey truth seeker how are you sue says that's what they do <laughs> yeah do dr kairi in the house correct so john says how long is the flight to pakistan so from here it's turkish air uh from here to turkey is 12 or 13 hours if you can hear me correctly and then from 2 2 hours or 2 and a half hour layover then another 5 hours or 5 and a half hours alexander says that is there serious research on long covid at the moment no so i think people are collecting stats that how many people have long covid but very few uh, studies i'm seeing that are going deeper in the mechanism so unfortunately i think the mechanism studies may not be as much liked because the stats study kind of become part of this anti vaccine pro vaccine fight and because of that they get more traction but i see less studies for the actual mechanisms words word says so so beautiful i'm glad she's there there thank you and now she has drooled all over my table as well while she is kneading yeah that's a long um uh, long flight that's a long flight So Krista says allergies are bad here in Ohio it was 65 when the rainy today and tomorrow it will be 72 things are budding and blooming yeah so there are flowers all around here as well and <laughs> everyone in the family hina my wife is also now lying in the other room she is coughing too yep that's a long flight Zizi Berman says, "How are you, Doctor B? In my kitty does the same. Blocks the screen until all attention on him, and he drools. Lol. So I'm doing well. And yes, now Kyrie has just drooled all over the table as well. And guess what she's doing now? So the hand with which I have the mouse, she's just licking that hand." <laughs> Sky says longest flight I was on was fifteen hours. The stewardesses were sleeping too. Yes, it's a, it's a long flight. Um, Zizi says when do you leave? So I'll be leaving tomorrow at six twenty-five from San Francisco, evening. Risa, thank you very much. We'll do. John says that many researchers looking for money to study it. Absolutely. The thing is this: the researchers have to get funding, and the funders have to figure out. I think, unfortunately, what is more interesting to them, I think, long COVID and vaccine injury, and the serious outcomes of COVID. These are the three areas where a lot of research should be done. to understand why did some people die or become really severely ill why did people develop long covid and why did people get vaccine injured <laughs> quinn says it's never too late to get vaccinated and boost the value of alquin's pfizer shares alexander says sorry to hear and alexander what i'll do is i'll do some research as well now that i'm leaving i'll see how well the wifi works on the plane usually when it is over the ocean it doesn't really work very well but i'll do some research to see if there is anything latest meepal art says would there be a mechanism by which if a very a previous covid infection might make sinus allergy symptoms worse the only way that symptoms can become worse is that the previous infection if that has caused the immune system to stay at a heightened state so anything you throw at it it overreacts 
that is possible if there is an autoimmune component of the previous infection, kind of long COVID. But if that is not the case and the previous infection has been long back, then there would be less chances. <laughs> Kairi's licking my hand. Lots of no spray on plane to keep pass passages moist. Yes, and I'm going to take Cofix RX with me as well. So hopefully that would help. ZZ Berman says MCAS is an issue. So yeah, if, if there is an autoimmune component from the previous infection, then this can happen. I wish this camera was trained lower and you could see what she's doing. Claire says, I want to get that spray COVID RX. So it is Co-Fix RX. M. Gregory says, I've not been in a plane. So this is going to be, other than going to uh, FLCCC conference, since February of 2020, this will be my first time going back on an inter international tour. So Denise says, Cofix, both N95 and two HEPA filters didn't work for me two weeks ago for Echo. That is so sad. Sorry about that. Hey, Krista, how are you? Super says, uh, I wonder if Dr. Bean can talk about the mechanism of action of guanfacine. I'll do that. I just have to be able to remember it. So when I say I'll do it, that's about it. So I have not taken a note somewhere and then I forget. So you may have to uh, remind me again and then I'll do it. And this one, especially because I'm going to now be off and on till 18th March, I would just forget. So... Kevin says, does natokinase break down spike? If so, what is the mechanism? I have actually done this discussion. Let me, and this is my request. Uh, let me actually share my screen. The request is, if I go to, so this is drbean.com. If you go to YouTube, now I have to go over Kyrie and type YouTube, Long story short, FLCCC. Okay, so in these videos, I think I have discussed natokinase. Let me see if I can find it. Here. So is natokinase protective against SARS-CoV-2? And I have discussed the mechanism. And secondly, natokinase antithrombotic mechanism of action. So I have discussed them both. My request is the following. Uh, although there are just, what, 17, 1800 subscribers. However, I really feel that this channel, I'm going to put the link here is useful to keep a tab on. And here is the reason why. This is only long COVID and only the videos that have some mechanism related to long COVID or vaccine injury. Sometimes I've discussed some stats as well. And if you see, for example, in my own channel, Dr. Bean Medical Lectures that we are discussing right now on, this channel has a variety of talks. And so if somebody is just looking for long COVID type talks, they have to sift through lots of videos. Here, if you see four main predictor of the long COVID, the inspiration behind long story, how spike protein damages mitochondria, coffee induced autophagy, persistent all, all tissues, when the RNA won't go away, how to maximize autophagy, autophagy with intermittent fasting, spike protein disturbed nitric oxide, near infrared light, spikeopathy, anti-nuclear antibodies, methylene blue. Um, so all related to photobiomodulation, 
oral dosage for natokinase antithrombotic mechanism is natokinase protective autophagy brain fog dandelions chronic inflammation long covid and chronic fatigue so you can see the epstein bar so somebody was saying the ebv reactivation i actually have done that series here so if you see here epstein bar virus reactivation part 1 2 3 4 4 although it's kind of out of sequence but still four separate talks about that and then just now i was doing i did this uh, berberin talk i think these are going to be up soon and then after that i have done one more series already that i'm going to start presenting now that is about the sleep and its role in helping against the cognitive decline and dementia and many of the things with the long covid neurological or vaccine injury so these three four videos will be up soon as well my apologies the i have taken allegra but i still have this So Janice says are there real numbers on the unvaccinated versus vaccinated Janice elaborate what do you mean by real numbers Adi says i hope you have me, you have some fun activities planned for your trip you deserve a break to decompress from the last three years looking forward to hearing some good stories on your return absolutely so majority of these are talks in various medical colleges i think there are one or two days where I am going out with Dr. Bean team or with my family members. So I think for me talking and discussing is the fun. <laughs> That that's about it. Carol says that so glad you're going to be talking about sleep because i've always struggled with getting a good night's sleep yes and so um, not only just the sleep but the mechanisms which demonstrate the importance of good sleep and what happens during the sleep how our brain is cleaned and so basic idea carol is when we sleep and we have good sleep pressure and what that means is we have let's say we are tired during the day sufficiently tired that we are just sleepy or we haven't had a nap during the day or lesser nap but at the end of the day we are really really sleepy that means higher sleep pressure so when the sleep pressure is high within 45 minutes of sleep we enter a phase of sleep called n3 and the n3 phase is an n rem phase non rapid eye movement phase and during this phase this is also the slow slowest move uh, slowest wave phase it's delta waves and the during this time i visualize it you know that i visualize everything i visualize this as a big you know uh, pulsating mass where the blood vascular system becomes kind of uh, pulsating with the elect- uh, neurons and the electrical activity in there so really the the mass itself is not pulsating it's just that there is a rhythm between the neuronal activity so neurons reduce their activity as well and become very oscillatory and rhythmic during the day right now all of our neurons are just firing in so many ways that there is no rhythm in them they're just firing for carrying out various tasks but when we are in the n3 phase of the sleep then they become very rhythmic and every 20 second they fire and then they relax and then they fire and then they relax and they fire and at with that rhythm our blood 
vascular system and CSF system becomes rhythmic as well. And fluid is brought in and fluid is expelled and fluid is brought in and fluid is expelled. That causes a rhythm and a force of convection fluid from the brain that washes away the beta amyloids and tau proteins and other inflammatory mediators. If we don't get that N3 phase of the sleep, our brain doesn't get a chance to clean the waste products very well. The result is those waste products start piling up. And when they pile up, that causes even more obstruction to the flow of the fluids, or as we should call that, interstitial fluid. And as the fluid flow from the brain, the washing fluid, that flow reduces, we get even more waste products to be piled up. So this is equal to if we have a street where there is garbage or trash accumulating, enough that even the truck cannot move anymore. And that would only lead to more garbage and more obstruction to the truck's path and more garbage and so on. That causes dementia and Alzheimer and cognitive decline and confusion. So if we sleep well, with good sleep pressure, less interruptions in sleep, more N3 sleep, then our brain gets washed out correctly and we actually feel fresh. Our cognition is better. Our confu uh, confusion in various tasks reduces. So the brain fog reduces and then the chances to dementia reduce as well. So beautiful mechanisms. I've been discussing, I've done three now so far. And there are a lot of them. And I wanted to, now that we are talking about it, maybe that would be takeaway before I go. Fish oil is very important for improving the channels that allow the fluids to pass through the brain tissue. Exercise doesn't have to be very rigorous, even light exercise and Kyrie is licking my hand. She changed her position and now she's licking this hand. Uh, exercise. Then um, a few more things I'll discuss, those mechanisms. They, they all contribute towards the better convection of fluids movement from the brain and help brain recover. It's a beautiful mechanism. So sorry, I became so busy in explaining. I didn't look at the comments. So let's see. So Cynthia says, I've been daily reviewing my deep sleep and three sleep cycles on my Fitbit. I need more. Okay, so yes. One more thing, which is kind of not very good thing. And that is when we are, so the children, babies, have predominantly N3 sleep which you can kind of understand. And Luffy is now outside uh, being upset. Kairi, what do you think? Luffy should come back here. Children have pre, babies have predominantly N3 sleep, which can tell you that they are just continuously cleaning their brain tissues, just like other body tissues, because they're, they're building their tissue very fast. They're, they're, double, they're doubling in their size very quickly. So children have more N3. Then after puberty, our N3 sleep starts reducing. Usually N3 occurs in the first half of our sleep when we are very, very tired and very sleepy. Even then, in the adulthood, it's only 20 to 25% of the overall sleep is N3. Beginning part of the night, there are more N3. One interval could be as long as 90 minutes in the beginning, but then any other N3 would be shorter intervals. As we age, N3 starts reducing in general. And after 50 years, N3 almost start becoming depleted enough that by 75 plus, we don't even have N3 sleep anymore. And reduction in N3 sleep contributes to buildup of the waste products in the brain, which then causes dementias and cognitive declines and others. 
I have a feeling. So this is a feeling. That means it's kind of a throwaway statement from a scientific point of view. I have a feeling that long COVID, vaccine injury, or severe acute COVID, which then results in the uh, uh, neurological outcomes, it seems like, just like aging, these diseases cause an obstruction to the flow of the glymphatic system at any age, which puts us in a um, vicious cycle where more waste products pile up, which cause more obstruction to the flow of the fluids, which causes more waste products to pile up and the cycle continues. So most important thing in my opinion Again, opinion part, no scientific study behind this. I'm just connecting the dots and I may be wrong. In my opinion, the vaccine injured a long COVID patient, especially with the fatigue and neurological outcomes, should focus as one of the outcomes, as one of the interventions is on better sleep. And what happens is the problem with the fatigue is that patient just cannot operate very well. So they keep lying down and if because of that if they take some sleep some naps they may not develop enough sleep pressure to develop longer lasting sleep during the night and have more n3 and that is a vicious cycle so what should be the outcome um, for better improvement to the glymphatic system if n3 cannot do this then fish oil is very important. And I have done this talk. Um, uh, I will explain, or maybe, would you like me to explain how fish oil helps with that? I would totally go into the drawing mode and start explaining. It would not be a chit-chat. Denise, exactly this, that long COVID keeps you from sleeping. And the fatigue part makes you kind of go to bed more often, which also reduces the overall sleep plus the sleep interruptions occur, which then does not give a chance to N3, which means clearing out of the brain waste products becomes very difficult. And that just becomes a recursive, vicious cycle. Okay, so if you would like it, let me explain it then. All right, get ready. <laughs> let me open my... Lecture. Let me bring in the, okay. I'm going to drop into the, in the middle of the lecture. This is what I have done for FLCCC. And I think you would like that series. So let me explain. Let me just clean this little drools that Kyrie has here so I can move my hand here. Kyrie is still sitting in my lap right here. Okay. Let's talk about it. First thing, let's see this little <laughs> mechanical thing. What does this mean? Imagine from our heart, when the blood vessels come out, I'm just going to make an illustration, no anatomical or no accuracy to it. Just here are the blood vessels that come out. When they come out, they divide, correct? And as they divide, they become smaller and smaller in size. Eventually, these arteries that are taking blood away from the heart they become capillaries. Capillaries are really tiny microscopic blood vessels. Okay, so Kairi, Kairi, what's going on with you? Okay. <clears throat> what's going on? Sit down. Okay, I think she wants to go now. Okay, so here are the capillaries. The, the way capillaries work is the following. 
capillary or capillary whatever is the right pronunciation a capillary has an arterial end and a venous end it's actually one pipe microscopic in size smaller than the diameter of the red blood cell it's so small and it has an arterial end what that means is from this end there is fresh blood that is coming in it has uh, nutritional substances in it it has oxygen in it these substances would start moving out of the capillary the blood sorry the the cells that make the capillary walls they have tiny gaps between them which are of course called gap junctions through which the substances come out these are kind of uh, small enough gaps that not everything can come out still those things that we need they can come out plus oxygen comes out on the venous end the of course now the blood that has so many things to offer these things have come out of the arterial end so this venous end has lesser useful material in it so what happens is the venous end this waste substances they get back into the venous end and carbon dioxide get back in here and that is carried away and again why do substances get back in here they get back because the cells have these gap junctions between them through which the solutes or substances or molecules can get back in the blood system so this is i hope clear now this system that i have here let me just delete this so that my lecture drawings are not disturbed this is brain's system brain has a very interesting system this was uh, this part that i'm going to talk about glymphatic system was discovered by a danish scientist researcher in 2012 i believe so very recent what he found out was the following so i need your attention now so this is a capillary of the brain this this one this is a capillary now the first difference of this capillary from the remaining body is that the cells here that make up the walls of this capillary they are kind of very sticky to each other they do not have gaps between them so there are no gaps or gap junctions this is what we say tight junctions and the benefit of the tight junction is that the fluids from inside the blood vascular system cannot just leak out or come out diffuse out that cannot happen so then the question first question to uh, keep in mind is or first question that might appear in your mind is then how will the the good nutritional substances move out of the capillary and go to the brain tissue so that will be one so what happens is we make the blood brain barrier over here we are very very protective of the brain tissue we cannot keep getting new brain tissues we can make more blood every day but we cannot make more brains so what happens is there are channels in the walls of the capillaries that are specialized to pick up the fish that we need imagine there's a river flowing and there are various kinds of fish in this and there are specific specific fish catcher channels that pick up what is needed what is correct for the brain and they bring that out of the blood vessel but the story is not finished there we have another if you see here this green set of cells these capillaries are then imagine my arm with the sleeve around that so imagine the sleeve is the capillary the uh, sorry the arm is the capillary the sleeve is another set of cells called pericytes they also kind of enclose the capillaries and they also have channels to allow fluids to come out from the blood vascular system outwards but the story doesn't finish there this is what we knew before 2012 after 2012 that danish scientist said and this is now a, a established science that the astrocytes astrocytes are cells in the brain that under the microscope look like a star 
that is why we call them astrocytes astrocytes are small cells that have many many projections from them those projections from the astrocytes these blue ones over here these projections then convert into big foot or feet that is why we call them feet the podocytes podocytes or foot processes you can see that one over here this astrocyte has this little foot process and then that foot process once again engulfs or surrounds the capillary system of the brain so now we have a capillary which around that we have a pericyte then around we have another collar or another uh, surrounding material or made up of astrocytes so this is equal to imagine you have your arm then you're wearing a shirt that shirt is the pericytes then you wear a jacket now there is another layer on top of it the space that is between the jacket and the shirt that space here is the space between the foot processes sorry let me go back here foot processes which are this and the pericytes which is this so this space here was discovered by the danish scientist and what he found out was that when we make csf 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 is the cerebrospinal fluid our brain makes its own little circulation system that is made up of csf so we produce csf in the cavities of the brain then that csf comes out of the brain cavities and then surrounds the whole brain that is what we knew and then we used to say that that csf will then get diffused back and taken away in the venous system but actually that is not the case what they found was the csf actually surrounds these blood vessels and it is present inside this sleeve made by astrocytes this space here where csf is present imagine the shirt that you're wearing and the jacket that you're wearing between the shirt and the jacket there is fluid this is called perivascular space or collectively paravascular space now elizabeth i'll answer you in just one second hey parth how are you but this is actually a very important concept for you as well for neuro neurology i know that many medical students become very afraid of neurology and especially these uh, mechanisms because these are difficult to visualize so hopefully you can pay attention to this one so path is a medical student okay so here we have the csf present here now guess what happens from inside the blood vascular system selective materials are coming out then wear out in this perivascular space but the perivascular space is already filled with csf right so this is equal to if i make something like this imagine this is a river and then this is another river this river is filled with csf this river is filled with blood we have a channel from here to here where we pick up selective fish and throw them in this river then we have another set of channels that would once again take this mixture and throw it out what a beautiful mechanism we are such a tremendous machine that you cannot imagine so what happens is this fluid that comes out from inside and the fluid that is here that is csf that then gets mixed up and then there are special channels called aquaporins these channels are the one that allow this mixed fluid to come out once this fluid comes out of the vascular system then it is called interstitial fluid which is normal any fluid present inside the tissue spaces is called interstitial fluid in the brain interstitial fluid not only performs the action of providing energy and nutrition and oxygen and take away the waste products as normal vascular system and interstitial fluid does in the brain we thought there was no lymphatic system here is what happens this fluid acts as a convection current to pick up the waste products and then take them away to the venous side so if you see the venous side venous side is the exiting side 
This is the neuron. So the fluid comes out, washes the neurons. It kind of, the neurons are like brand new cars that are always in need of washing. And so now the fluid starts getting back out of the brain. For that, once again, the same process, there is perivascular space. Bigger molecules will get stuck in the perivascular space and then they would be brought out and they would go to the deep cervical veins and from there they would go back to the cardiovascular system. And the smaller molecules will enter the blood vascular system veins and then they'll go back from there. Now, if PARTH is over here, PARTH, the... The glymphatic system of the brain drains into the deep cervical nodes that are under the sternocleidomastoid muscle here. And from there, the, this goes back to the heart. So the first important concept to note. So I'm, I'm going to stay within the, um, within the concept of the omega-3, but let me offer... So parsed omega-3... Omega-3 helps in the cognitive function reduction. So I'll explain how. Myelin is not just the only thing omega-3 does. So let me show you what else it does. So first, folks who have, let's say, due to long COVID or vaccine injury or just in general uh, cognitive decline, this uh, sternocleidomastoid and uh, massage on this, so the lymphatics are deeper. There are superficial and deep lymphatics. We're talking about the deep lymphatics because they are the ones connecting with the lymphatic system. Nasal area is also connected with the lymphatic system. So there is an anterior drainage and there is a posterior dra drainage. So you can massage on the not on the angle of the jaw. Carotid bodies are here. So if you massage here, that can cause reduction in the heart rate and even fainting. So don't touch here at least not together, you can do one and like this. But here, down here on the sternocleidomastoid, you can do a little pressurized milking from above to downwards. That would pump the glymphatic system. That would forcefully cause a vacuum when you do this, not really a vacuum, but kind of it would cause a suction effect and allow more CSF to move through the brain tissue and, and push the substance is out. That is just a very simple mechanical thing and you would feel better, but then that is not a permanent solution. Second part is going to be omega-3. So let me now go back to omega-3 for a second. And uh, if you talk with folks who may have long COVID or vaccine injury, they would actually tell you that if they do this, they feel better, but for some time and then the the glymphatic circulation does not continue because there are still waste products present in the brain and they don't feel better then. And so it is kind of a temporary solution. This temporary solution can be further improved by spinal cord pumping, which also forces the CSF and the interstitial fluids to move in the brain tissue. Now, omega-3. As the as we age or as we have inflammation or as we have disruption of sleep, what happens is these astrocytes develop a very interesting problem. That is, and this is especially when we don't sleep well. What happens is the, these channels, these aquaporins, they start moving away from these foot processes and they start appearing on the body of the astrocytes. Now, think about it for a second. The channel's function is to move the fluid from inside this perivascular space through the channel to outside, to the brain. If the channel is present here on this head of this little cell, what will that do? What will that do? I just got some weird ad blocker has been updated message. Okay. Uh, can you? 
I mean, okay, so if a channel is present here on the head of the cell, what is that going to do? Where is that going to move the fluid from? Of course, the fluid is not going to go from the perivascular space all the way to the head and then get out. This is a wasted channel. But astrocyte still feels happy that I have made 1,000 channels. It doesn't know that they are now growing on its head. And there are less channels on the foot. The foot channels are needed. This is called... This is called abnormality of the polarization of the astrocytes. Why? Polarization of astrocyte is a different concept than the polarization of neurons. Polarization of astrocyte simply means presence of the channels on the foot process. Foot feet are polar ends of the astrocytes. So when the channels are present in the feet, we say they are polarized cells. But when the channels start appearing everywhere, then they're not polarized cells. Lack of sleep causes the cells to not be polarized correctly. All right, now Kyrie is going. Okay, so I was in a very awkward posture to draw and have her in the in my lap as well okay so polarization is a problem you can probably now assess that if we have lack of sleep and she's now gone near the switchboard where the camera is relaying if she kicked it i might go offline but i'll come back online this polarization or lack of polarization becomes a problem and that happens because of lack of sleep or lack of N3 sleep. How do we fix that? Omega-3. Omega-3. Yes, it, we know that it works with the myelin sheath. It helps the myelin sheath to build up. It helps with the better neuronal function. That all is known. This is another interesting thing, an important thing. Omega-3 repolarizes these cells means these astrocytes start producing aquaporin back on their feet, which allows the glymphatic fluids or interstitial fluid to be generated with more volume and pass through the interstitial fluid, uh, the spaces, brain spaces, which allows the clearing of the brain tissue to improve. This is the same thing with exercise as well. Exercise actually mechanically helps push the fluids. You can, if you cannot do an exercise because of, let's say, you don't have time or because of the injury or the disease and you just cannot do exercises, then doing this, do not press on the angle of jaw. Doing this, pumping spinal cord, having fish, omega-3, then relaxing. That is another important one. So let me explain this too. Give me one second. I'm going to go back here. Cortisol, the stress hormone, actually changes the polarity of these cells as well. Then norepinephrine, which norepinephrine inside the brain is produced in a place called locus ceruleus. Yes, Parth? So, locus ceruleus is a nucleus in the brain stem. We, we call it locus ceruleus because it is blue in color, so we call it blue spot, locus ceruleus. It produces norepinephrine for the brain. The norepinephrine's function is to cause vasoconstriction. So, imagine when we are causing vasoconstriction of the brain vessels, then there'll be less flow of the fluids. When there is less flow of the fluid, there will be less cleaning of the fluids of, of the brain. And guess when norepinephrine is produced more? During the wakeful time because it helps us with the wakeful activities. So when we are sleeping, especially when we are sleeping in N3, norepinephrine levels go down, vasodilatation occurs, CSF production increases because of vasodilatation, the fluid, interstitial fluid production increases or movement increases and the waste products start getting cleared out. So stress hormones reduce this movement of glymphatic system, norepinephrine 
reduces the movement of the lymphatic system. So being more relaxed, and it's a very difficult thing to, I said that a few, I think in these talks as well, which are not published yet. Asking someone to go relax is such a, uh, not the best thing to do. When I am stressed for some reason, and if somebody walks up to me and say, oh, relax, you'll be okay. That doesn't really relax. That actually causes people to become even more stressed that now somebody says I should be relaxed and I'm not able to relax. So everyone has to figure out what is it that helps them relax. And every situation would need a different way to relax. Sometimes people listen to music and relax, but then every stressful situation doesn't need music. So you'll have to figure out what helps you relax. That relaxation would reduce adrenaline and cortisol, which would help with more flow in the brain. And then sleeping will reduce the brain norepinephrine, which would allow more flow to occur and more waste products to, to be removed. So in my opinion, so this is opinion can be thrown away. In my opinion, Near-infrared and intermittent fasting, fish oil, better sleep with pressure, light exercises, relaxation, which, whichever way you can, will really make a difference for cognitive declines, even when we get trapped in that vicious cycle. So these are the ways to break it. One simple switch to break it is to do this. Now imagine when I do this, I'm saying, all right, am I pulling on my skin? It's going to sag. So what you do is just put some oil on or lotion and then do it. But you have to do it a little more firmly because the lymphatics are deeper to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So this is my gift before I <laughs> go for my travel and um, this is important for us to help our brain stay healthy so let's see does this make sense um, I hope I did not did not spill too much these are three four five lectures which I just very quickly summarized Dan, I'm not sure about omega-6. I know about omega-3 because that is in the studies. I'm not sure about 6. Andrew says, but brain fog does not feel similar to the state I experienced due to prolonged insomnia. It is more like disruption in some very short-term memory or like intolerance to mental activity. Correct. Brain fog is just one name for a collective collection of various symptoms, but inability to focus, inability to plan, inability to think clearly, inability to do simple math or simple things that you usually do very easily. These are kind of put together in the brain fog. Otherwise, yes, as the metabolites increase in the brain, every part of the brain will start not functioning as optimally, including the executive part, the frontal part, the temporal part with the memory, and the auditory systems, and the language systems, and then other parts as well. Jenny says, thank you very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> Sky frogs. <laughs> I don't drink water, fish poop in water. Very, very nice sky. Okay, so let me answer this question too. Yes, circadian rhythm, our normal wakefulness and sleep, sleeping rhythm, melatonin, um, then other chemical substances of the brain are also related to sleep. However, the substance that affects the most of the glymphatic movement is norepinephrine. 
Now, norepinephrine, you cannot go to your locus ceruleus and say, all right, don't make norepinephrine. Or you can't just start going and taking norepinephrine uh, or uh, norepinephrine receptor blockers unless there is somebody who is in a real bad situation and the receptor blockers are really needed. Otherwise, relaxation would help. So melatonin, sure, mechanical help, fish oil, exercise, and then anything that can give you better deep sleep. 10 milligram seems very high though. There are people who take 10 milligram. I cannot take more than 3 milligram without having nightmares. Paul Burke says, think of the light button on the way out. My thanks, it already pushed and consider pushing it. Thank you very much, Paul. Yes. Yes, nightmares. I get nightmares with melatonin. John says, do you remember the time when you didn't share your screen for a long time? When I totally remember that. I also remember the time when I spoke for half an hour while my mic was not connected. And this was just... <laughs> so I have done such things, yes. <laughs> Skyfrog says, but I love melatonin nightmares. Okay. Parth says, thank you. So Parth, I would request you to do something. Read up on the glymphatic system. Medical books have very less of that. It's just a more recent um, science. However, it makes a huge difference for your patient to be aware of the glymphatic system. It's working. What simple things like exercise, smaller naps during the day, more tiredness that puts you into more deeper sleep, omega-3, less stress, or figuring out, we can't ask that there is no stress, this is life, figuring out how to be less stressful. All of those things, you as a doctor, will have to talk with your patient to say, do these things. And so please read this one up. Okay, good. So, so Jim says, does methylene blue affect sleep near infrared light? With So I have not heard that methylene blue would affect sleep, but some people say it helps them. Some say it does not. Although if you listen to Dr. Paul Merrick, he always says that methylene blue plus near infrared together. Angela Zhang says, Dr. Bean, two years ago, I took monoclonal antibodies treatment for COVID, BAM, Lenifimab. Since then, I often get sick, seems immune system impaired. Have you heard about these are using mRNA technology? So, no, I have not. And the BAM, Lenifimab as a antibody should not have effect so long. Again, I'm not saying that you don't have it because of that but it should not because these are antibodies usually break down within, naturally breaks down within four to six weeks. And then these are made a little more durable. So about a couple of months. <laughs> John says, how different are Pakistani and Indian foods? So I think there are uh, some religious, some cultural differences where some foods are very similar, some foods are very different. Then, of course, uh, Pakistani foods have influence from uh, Turkish and Persian foods as well. Indian foods themselves have their own uh, flavors and their own recipes with the vegetarian foods. And then they have influence from the uh, fo foods with meat. And so I think there is a lot that mixes. For example, Hyderabadi biryani is very tasty biryani which is from India, but Nihari 
is <laughs> Pakistani Nihari is much better. So I think there are various such things. So yes, Parth, I'm going to go to Pakistan tomorrow and I'll reach there on 25th. I'll be there till 17th. I'll fly from 17th and I think I'll be back on 18th. I'll be speaking in some colleges. Glenn says, very good lecture today. Hope you have a safe and wonderful trip. I look forward to your return. Thank you very much. Now, while I'm out, I have recorded these and I'll be handing them over to FLCCC. So while I'm out, they will be releasing them. And so please make sure that you have your eyes on this uh, long story short channel. And these will be there. I am actually still amazed that channel, which is less than 2000 subscribers, actually has better concentrated content than even my channel. So Lenny says, I have difficulties to sleep well because of my tinnitus. What may help this situation? Lenny, this is a very difficult thing. Some of my family members, I have tinnitus as well. My family members, some of them have tinnitus too. Difficult thing, I do not have a good answer. Um, I have become used to it because I had it when I was a child. And so I just forget about it. But there are so many solutions, for example, music or white noise, or there are uh, devices made specially that can be the negative wave to your uh, phase, your wavelength of the tinnitus sound. And they try to invert that to kind of neutralize this. So there are, or becoming so tired that when you go to bed, you just can't stay awake anymore. So please talk with your doctors. They would have various solutions. Some of these will be medical interventions. Diversity Love says, will you post a video of food and sifts of Pakistan? Absolutely. I, uh, absolutely. I think I'll have to kind of remove those afterwards because then the channel would just look like a trip to Pakistan. Or maybe I can do it on the uh, Dr. Mubin Sayyid channel. But yes, I would be happy to do it. John, John says I use a white noise machine. Yes. Yeah, and um, even microbiomes help with this uh, N3 sleep. I'm so sorry. Whenever anybody who has tinnitus, when you start talking about tinnitus, they get it. Um, Susan, you'll have to do some research to figure out what is the best one. Or maybe if you go to flccc.net, they may have the brands that they prefer. Glenn says, I love Indian and Pakistani food. Is Pakistani food similar? Slightly different. Uh, I like Pakistani food more. <laughs> Kelly says bedtime. Um, good night, Kelly. <laughs> Jean says, what presentation topics have you prepared for your talks in Pakistan? I want to talk more on the long COVID and vaccine injury. The colleges over there are asking more about diabetes type uh, talks. I think the reason for that is that it is actually not very clear that there is a thing called long COVID and there is a thing called vaccine injury. And because of that, many such patients are just, either they just have to keep living and taking part in the daily activity while saying I'm not feeling well and people saying whatever, you are making it up. I want to create that awareness over there. If I could have, imagine if, if I had unlimited money that I don't have to do talks and I don't have to do works on Dr. Beans and others, I would have spent six months just going from college to college to college 
and just explaining what long COVID is, just starting the idea of this thinking that there is something called long COVID or vaccine injury, then people, students can do their own research. Parth is over here for some time. I'm sure Parth is much more aware of long COVID and vaccine injuries than many of his class fellows, not because of their fault, but it's just that awareness is not there. This awareness is needed. So that's what I'm trying. So there is a, that lack of awareness also means they don't ask for this topic. So Pika says, do you think our neurological issues will disappear one day? It's been too long, losing hope here. I have seen long COVID patients, majority, to have always been gradually improving, even without anything improving. So please don't lose hope. Um, I will keep finding more things to present to you. Something will work. There are many patients who are here. One thing doesn't work, something else would work. And so something will help. So stay hopeful, less stress, don't lose hope, go out. And this is not me doing psychotherapy. Go out and walk in the park or near the plants because they have phantom site that help you relax, which then in turn helps with the glymphatic flow, helps with the reduction in the stress hormones, do light exercises. Light exercises move your muscle and your lymphatic and glymphatic system, which washes away the waste product from the muscles and allows them to have less fatigue and have better neuro uh, nervous system connections with them and better operation. The exercise should not be so rigorous that ex exercise itself produces more lactic acid and other uh, uh, waste products, which then becomes difficult to wash out. Then nitric oxide or blood vascular vasodilators and blood thinners, again, with your doctor's advice, blood thinners can really become dangerous. They can kill a person by causing strokes or other problems, bleedings. So aspirins and vasodilators, uh, Cardio Miracle is interesting. Levoarginine is interesting. Levocitrulline is interesting. They would help with the, with the blood flow. Omega-3 fish oil would help with the glymphatic systems. So there is a bunch of things that when come together, something would work. Why do I say something will work? Every patient's pathology is different. What is causing their problem is different. Is it MCAS? Is it vascular system? Is it blood clotting issue? Is it glymphatic system or the waste products in the brain? Is it the inflama inflammation between the nerve and the and the muscles? Uh, again, I keep talking about path. Path would know neuromuscular junctions. Is there a problem inflammation of the neuromuscular junction? Is there an inflammation of the, the muscle itself? Is there an, in, a problem with the myelin sheath? Is there a problem with the heart? So everyone has a different... Is this an autoimmune disease? Do we have anti-ACE2 antibodies running around? Do we have ANAs running around? They all have a different way of helping. The symptoms can be same. So because of that, don't lose hope, but keep trying various things. And I think something would click. The best way is to do the labs to figure it out. However, I'm not a big fan of some of the companies that are offering labs, which really have, I have never seen them correlating to the disease. I would rather approach the management through a clinical point of view instead of just labs. One lab I, I really like is the NTAS2, but that is also very expensive. It is cell trends in Germany. It's $1,200. I was actually talking with someone to say, maybe we should open a company here in the US for NTAS2 antibody detection and maybe have that for free or $50 or $60, $1,200 every time you want to understand how is NTS2 doing is, is difficult. Parth says, I love pathology and immunology. Yes, thank you, Parth. I love them too. Sky says, I think Dr. Bean has done 100 lectures in one to get it out before his flight. <laughs> Thank you, Sky. This is me 
starting to miss you all and trying to offer something that can be useful. Alexander says, very interesting today. Thank you, Alexander. Betsy says, safe and fruitful journey. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> John says, Dr. B, you need to make money to charge 500. Yes. So I need someone who can help me make money. I don't make money. I just have not that salesy behavior. So <laughs> very less money oriented. Although there are so many people who actually cause, call me a paid shill of the big pharma. Thank you very much, Krista. And thank you very much. Janine Hook says, I've missed these talks. I'm so sorry. Um, we'll do more. Sita says, have a great trip. Thank you very much. Barbara says, we love you because you're genuine. Thank you. Um, Kim says, Dr. Bing, you're going to use Indian nasal spray on your trip. I don't know if it is Indian or not. Cofix Rx. And I don't have a problem with the Indian medicine. I think most of our supplements come from there. Our vaccines come from there. So, Diversity says, I've come up with something to help you make money. Yes, very good. <laughs> Let's make money, <laughs> which I have no idea how to make money. <laughs> this is the good one. Skyfrog says, just print it. <laughs> yes, Skyfrog wants me to be taken away by some law enforcement. Fish oil. Fish oil omega-3 is very important for polarizing the astrocytes to allow better glymphatic flow, to allow more waste product removal and better functioning, for, functioning of our brain. Cool. So with this, <laughs> Barbara says typical sky frog, compression socks. Actually, I have them right over there. I'm going to put them with me. I have just uh, taken aisle side seats. So I stand up every hour and walk about. It is actually long flight. It's difficult to. Les says, thank you. Awesome drawings. Thank you very much. So with this, please have a good uh, evening. Stay safe, happy and healthy. Um, Continue to watch <laughs> videos, some on my channel and some on others. Don't get fear-mongered by anyone. There are many people nowadays trying to fear-monger, which is not good. And I would, I would try to continue to do some lectures, maybe one or two per week, but I cannot promise until I reach there and figure out how the life is going to look like. So with this, thank you very much. I'll see you maybe more often but if not, then after 18th, keep an eye on the Long Story Short channel. Over there, these lectures that I just discussed about the glymphatic system, these will continue to be presented because I've already recorded them. So with this, thank you very much. Like, subscribe and share. If you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. You can buy me a coffee or you can use Patreon or you can use PayPal or Substack. So with this, thank you very much. I'll see you again.